Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this edition of AP Micro Mondays, I'm going to be walking you through tax incidences. So whenever you're faced with a tax incidence question, you want to think about which side of the market is more inelastic. And the reason why I say that is because the more inelastic you are, the more of the burden you're going to be faced with. So keeping that in mind, let's look at the first situation in which we have an elastic demand. So first let's review two little quick tricks of how to remember which direction elasticity looks like and what looks like inelasticity. So elasticity, you just want to think about this middle line of the E, and then inelastic, you want to think about this long vertical line of the I. And I'll show you how to apply these in these examples. So first let's look at a situation in which demand is elastic. Okay, so in this situation, we have our standard axes, and our demand curve is going to be relatively flat, like an E, because it's elastic. And then we're going to have a supply curve that looks like this originally, and then it's going to move upwards to S2. And now what we can do is we can think about where the intersection of supply and demand is in these two scenarios. And so the original intersection of supply and demand is P0, and then the new one is P1. And what we also know is that even though the seller is charging a higher price now at P1, they're actually going to receive this amount down here after the tax. So this is P2. And so what this entire region represents is the total tax revenue. So now let's think about what the overall burdens are for both consumers and for producers. So let's go ahead and think about what the consumer now pays. As a, re as a result of the tax, the consumer is now paying a price of 1 versus a price of 0, so P1 versus P0, and therefore that difference is the overall tax burden on the consumer. And then if we think about the tax burden on producers, it's the difference between the price that they originally would receive and the new price they'll receive, which is P2. And therefore, we are faced with a situation where you can clearly see, because the demand side or the consumer is more elastic, the producer is going to bear more of the tax. So that goes back to that original rule that I told you about, which is, Whichever side is more inelastic is going to bear a larger portion of the burden. So now let's look at a situation in which we are faced with um, a demand inelastic market. Okay, so if the overall market here is a demand inelastic market, then we know that we're faced with this, in which we are much steeper, more like a vertical I. So this is your demand. And then we know that our supply curves are going to be like this, and that we can trace the intersection points of these supply curves. And so this is P0, this is P1, and then the original, so even though the producer is now charging a higher price to account for the tax, he's actually receiving this amount. And then again, we can go through that same procedure in which we think about what the consumer now has to pay, which is P1, versus the original price, which was P0. And then for the producer, what the producer originally would receive versus what the producer now receives. So as you can see here, what's happening is the opposite effect in which the consumer is bearing more of the burden. So let's intuitively break this down and think about why this is the case. Well, what we know is that in the first situation in which our demand is elastic, what elasticity tells us is that consumers can easily switch away from this good. So if there is a tax in which producers are now limiting supply a little bit more and setting a higher price, then the consumers are just going to shift away to either substitute or just leave the market. And in the situation in which demand is inelastic, what that means is that consumers can't easily switch away from this good. So maybe this good is something like, um, you know, 
oil. So if you're looking at gas, then the situation is consumers are relatively inelastic because they need gas to go to different places. Whereas the situation of the first scenario in which the demand is elastic might be DVDs, in which you know DVDs are something that are a overall non-essential in terms of our daily functioning. So that's the way to think about it. You want to think about how easy it is for the consumer to switch away from the good. And in the case where the consumer can't easily switch away, they're going to bear a larger portion of the tax because the producer understands this and therefore they will um, see this situation in part two in which we saw that the producer is bearing a smaller portion of the tax in relation to the consumer. Okay, so now let's tackle two more scenarios. The first situation that we're going to cover is what happens in the case in which we are faced with a demand inelastic consumer that's perfectly inelastic. And then the fourth scenario that we're going to cover is what happens if we have perfect elasticity for the demand side. So thinking about these two cases, we can tackle them very much the same way. In this case, if we have a perfectly inelastic demand, what that means is that your demand curve is just a perfect vertical line, and then your supply curves are your standard supply curves, S2 and S1. And so, as always, we can track back to what the original P0 was and what the new P0 is. And what we can see here is that we have a very interesting situation in which the producer is actually going to be faced with the same price at P2 as P1 because if you go to the intersection of supply and demand, the new intersection lies here. However, tracing back to the original supply, this would be P2, which is what the um, seller sets the price at. And therefore, let's think about this. So from the consumer end, if the consumer originally paid a price of P0, but now is paying a price of P1, then the burden for the consumer is the rectangle here. And what we also see is that in this scenario, the producer is receiving the same at the end of the day. The producer is setting at P0 originally and then still gets P2 at the end of the day for um, this situation in which you have perfect inelasticity. And therefore, what this shows us is that if we're faced with a perfectly inelastic consumer demand, then the consumer is going to bear all the burden. And so this makes sense with what I just told you earlier about whichever side is more inelastic is going to bear more of the burden. Because in this case, what's happening is we have a situation of perfect inelasticity, which means that consumers have a one-to-one -one change ratio with respect to things So in this market. And therefore, consumers cannot easily change away from whatever good this is, what this rep market represents. So now let's think about the situation in the last scenario in which we have a perfectly elastic consumer demand. So that would be a perfectly straight horizontal line, S2 and S1. Again, let's think about where these intersections occur. Here is P0, here is P1. And then what we also know is that this is going to be P2. So as you can imagine, this is the complete opposite of the case on your left-hand side because essentially what's happening is we are faced with a situation where if we look at the consumer side, P0 and P1 are the same, whereas on the producer side, P2 is less than P0, and therefore, therefore accounting for that tax where the consumer is perfectly elastic, the producer is bearing all the tax. So these two edge cases really demonstrate the power of elasticity and really hit home the point that I was talking about earlier in which the side that is more inelastic is the side that bears more of the burden. Because let's look at this left-hand case. In this situation, we have a perfectly inelastic demand, and we have a situation in which the consumer will bear more, more, and in this case, all of the overall tax burden. However, on the right-hand side, we have a situation in which our consumer is perfectly elastic. So that means that the supply side is more inelastic, and therefore, in this case, 
not surprisingly, the producer bears all the tax burden. And so whenever you're approaching these tax incidence questions, what you essentially want to think about is which side of the market is more inelastic, because that will tell you the side that bears the most of the burden. So that pretty much covers it for this video. Feel free to check out our other videos to see how this is actually applied in the case of AP Micro FRQ questions. But for now, I will see you guys next time.